Okay, let's um talk about taxes today. So I've talked on this channel. I've been traveling and now we're gonna travel more permanently, you know, spend a couple of years actually just traveling about. And um there's a couple of reasons for that. One is fun, adventure, you know, we're empty nesters. We have income flowing in. I can work from anywhere. This is a golden opportunity. Let's take advantage of it. The other big part of this, well, one of the big parts is we also want to learn Spanish. If you haven't noticed, all the countries I've been going to are, are Spanish speaking, and that will probably stay that way because me um, espanol muy malo and it needs to get better. So, but the other big thing, and this is no small thing at all, is uh, saving money. And if you look at over our expenses, I suspect yours are similar uh, as primary earning our income through, you know, uh, earned income, W2 income from a company, our number one expense by far, um, more than double than everything else combined really, is taxes. And if you live abroad, you can actually cut down on taxes. Now, the U.S. is unique. Um, unique. I think Eritrea does this as well. If you know where Eritrea is, if you don't join the, the 90 other percent of the world, um, the U.S. is unique in the fact that uh, we we tax based off citizenship. If you're a U.S. citizen, congratulations, you get to pay taxes everywhere you live. Doesn't matter where you live, doesn't matter how long you're living there. If you're a U.S. citizen, they tax every dollar you make wherever you are. But there are a couple little tax breaks for folks living abroad, and they're not minor, um, especially if you're in the situation where you're primarily earning earned income. So I'm going to talk to you today about that. Um, I know everybody loves PowerPoint. <laughs> I have a PowerPoint because I think it makes sense for this for this chat. So um, let's uh, kind of lay out some ground rules of what I'm talking about. To be clear, this is for U.S. citizens. If you're not a U.S. citizen, none of this applies. I guess it could apply to a green card, but primarily a U.S. citizen, a permanent resident. If you wonder why I keep touching, I've got some notes here that I keep peeking at on my phone right in front of me. Um, so this is for U.S. citizens or permanent residents that are being paid by a US company, but have chosen not to live in the US. As far as that company is concerned, they are a US citizen, a resident of some state, because if there's a way to get out of being a resident of a state, I don't know what that is. If you do, leave a comment. But this is for a US citizen resident, declared resident in some state, but living abroad. So that's who this is for. Okay, so let's switch over, bring up some, um, some presentation notes here. Like so many things, uh, I'm a random dude on the internet. If you take everything I say about taxes as Bible, that's not real smart. This is kind of a hint. This is some ideas, not tax advice. Go seek an actual professional. So find an actual, actual tax professional. In the description, I'm going to leave a link of a tax group that I've worked with to prep for going abroad. I haven't actually used them for filing any taxes yet. They had good reviews on the internet. They're actually a US-based, you know, they're actual accountants, CPAs, I think out of California, but US-based that specialize in uh, expats. So I'll leave their link in there. I have only used them for advice, basically reaffirming some of the things I'm talking about here because I wanted to at least get some out in front of a real tax person. Okay. Um, Another good source for information, I'd just go to the IRS. The IRS is a great website. Um, IRS has an okay website. That's good for getting tax information. Most importantly, if I say something that you think or know is wrong, I don't believe I am today. I've triple checked everything. But if I am, again, not a tax expert, if I am, please leave a comment so other people know that. And if you actually work for the IRS, please leave a comment, double check everything I'm saying. What I'm talking about is paying every legally owed tax that you have to pay, but not one penny more. This is not how to cheat. This is not how to get out of paying taxes. Everything here is straight off the IRS website, verified by at least the accountants that I've talked to. This is paying every legal cent you owe, but no more. So 
foreign taxes, the seriously abridged version. So the um, stuff on that when you're going abroad, you may wish to look at is, and I list this first because it's desperately important. If you open foreign bank accounts, there's disclosure that you have to give to the US government that you have a foreign bank account. The bank has to give uh, information to the foreign bank account. Some banks don't even like opening for US citizens because it's such a pain in the patootie to uh, deal with the IRS, as you know. But if you have a foreign bank account, you have to report it. And there are some ridiculously crazy steep fines uh, for not doing it. So this is not something to say, oh, I don't know, because the IRS would be like, oh, that's okay, you didn't know. Here's a fine of, I think, half the balance of the account every year you didn't you know, report it. It's crazy. Report your bank accounts. Uh, there's credit, if you have to pay taxes in the country you're living in, there's foreign tax credits for that. There's something called foreign housing exclusion or deduction. That is insanely complicated. I tried reading through that and basically I just decided I'm gonna turn over the tax account and let them do it. What I'm gonna to talk today though is something a little bit more bang for the buck right off the bat and that is a foreign earned income deduction. So what's foreign earned income? Well, it depends on what country you're talking to. The US defines foreign earned income as an income you lived, you, you, you made uh, off services or other uh, doing a job, personal services or otherwise, basically your W-2 income that you did outside of the country. It doesn't have to be paid by the outside source. This is a key, very key importance. It can be paid by a US company, but if you did the work outside the US, whether it had to be done outside the US or not, that doesn't seem to matter. If you did it outside the US and you were living outside the US and fall into a couple specific living situations, you could deduct up to, and it varies each year, I think for 2021, it's all, you can deduct uh, taxes up to the first 108,000 of your earned income. I should point out what earned income is. If I'm making a killing off of Bitcoin, which I'm not, but let's say I am, that would not be earned income. That is um, equities income. I'm not sure how they actually define it, but it's not earned income. Earned income is something that you do for a living and get a W-2 for. Your investments, your real estate investments, your rental properties, your gold appreciation of that's happened in the last 10 years, I don't know. But all of that is not earned income. Earned income is you working for a company, making money. So, which is a lot of us. And if you're working for a company, making money, the IRS loves you because they just tax the bejeebers out of you more than anyone else. So that's earned income. Foreign earned income is when you're doing it overseas. So basically you have to be working for a company that sends you overseas or a company that's cool enough to let you go work overseas. And if you're overseas for a specific period of time and you meet a couple residency requirements, one of two residency requirements, then you can deduct foreign earned income. Now, there's two different tests for whether or not you qualify for foreign earned income. One is called the bona fide residency test. Uh, this is a little squishy. Uh, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna leave a link in the description of how one qualifies for that. Basically, you just don't get to qualify it if you're living somewhere. You have to show that you're kind of living there, your intent is to stay there, and you're not really planning on coming back to the US. Um, it's very squishy. There is another test called the physical presence test. So if you're actually living in a foreign country or countries, that's key, in a foreign country or countries for, at least 331 days, so basically 11 months, of the 12 months of the year, 365 days, you qualify for the physical presence test. Now you gotta be careful with this because notice I say any foreign country. You sailing across the Pacific on a sailboat working off satellite feed, you're not in a foreign country. You're in the ocean, that doesn't count. You are flying around in a jet all the time. You're not in a foreign country. You're in international airspace, does not count. You have to be on the ground and they will actually look at your passport. I haven't had this happen. I'm going off what I've heard, but they will track time and we recommend that you track all your time. 
gee, I boarded a flight for the U.S. at 11.52, wheels up at 11.52, wheels down, you know, back in this country at, you know, three days later at 12.27. Document it very closely because they will. They'll be extrapolating basically based off uh, passport stamps. You'll have extremely accurate accounting and you can say, nope, I've been out of the country for 27 days, eight hours, 42 minutes. I meet this test. Yay. So keep records. Also, if you're a government employee living overseas, bummer, dude, you don't get to count. There's lots of other things. This is a quick overview. I'm going to add links that have uh, IRS tests that you self tests that you can do, IRS estimations and things like that, right from the IRS website. Again, we're going straight from IRS. We're not trying to duck or hide on anything here. If you do meet those requirements, then you can basically deduct your first 108,000. I think it goes up, it's 108,500 in 2021. I forget, it goes up a little higher in 2022. So if you only make 108,000 a year, great, you owe no federal taxes if you meet those requirements. That's a significant savings. That's, that's tens of thousands of dollars depending on your deduction capabilities. Now, that's Fed though. You also, if you can figure out how to be a U.S. citizen and not be in a state and have to be registered in a state paying state income tax, leave a comment. But as far as I know, you have to have a, a state. And if you're going to come back to the U.S., like we're going to be out two or three years, we're going to come back to the U.S. When we come back, we want to have a driver's license. We don't want to have to reset life and not have a driver's license. Um, my company is not going to let me declare my residency as the planet earth and just wander around their tax situation they need to have me in a state so you got to be in a state at least i do and i think most people would fall into that situation so you're living in a state so some states like oregon also have that same uh, income deduction so up to one hundred eight thousand and in, in your uh tax in your first amount of income you can exclude from your taxes that's great but you can do better because if you're needing a state to declare your state, don't use Oregon or California. Don't use any of these that have high taxes. Better yet, use one that doesn't have any taxes, like Washington, right across the river from Oregon, uh, which is probably where we'll move back to, is live over there since I work remotely. Why live in Oregon? It was great at one time. It's not so great now. Alaska, Florida, Nevada, Flo uh, Wyoming. You see the list on the screen. All these have no income tax, which is great. But, you know, you do have to establish residency there with some sort of, you know, plausible believability there. Um, so here's what I did. We live in Oregon. Cross the River is Washington, tax-free state. Yay. I mailed the Secretary of State. Uh, I'm sure I didn't actually talk to the Secretary of State, but I mailed the Secretary of State and said, hey, I want to make Washington my new home because I'm going to go overseas. And when I come back, I'm going to move to Washington. What do I do? Lo and behold, they responded only in like a day. I was shocked saying, okay, establish a residency by getting a voter's card. Here's how you get a voter's card. Do you have friends and family in Washington? Use them as the primary address and set up your own mailing address wherever you want it. So I set up a mailing address in Washington using a virtual mailbox. If you don't know about these, Quick Primer, there's different companies. I use Anytime Mail. You can basically have a mailing address, street, not a PO box. It's an actual mailing address that is usually like a postal annex or something like that, that gets your mail. They scan it, put it online. You can see it anywhere in the world. You can have it forwarded to you. You can have it scanned. You can have it shredded, et cetera. I use it. I started using it like a year ago just because I got tired of junk mail coming to the house. I could see it online, say shred or recycle in that case, get rid of it. So I've established a mailing address in that state. I've got friends there, so I do have a, a resident that I can use, but I don't want to. I'm going to use my mailing address. Got a voter's card, signed up for a driver's license. I haven't done that yet because I'm still living in Oregon. So as I get closer to leaving Oregon, I will go get the driver's license. I can't vote in Oregon anymore because I have a voter's card in Washington. Keep it legal. Don't, don't be that guy or gal. Um, so then I'll go get my Washington driver's license, several ties with Oregon. Boom, I'm a Washington resident. 
Now, I did this perfectly legal. I followed the advice of their own Secretary of State. So I recommend you do that and keep the emails that you get from them. So now I'm in a state that has no income tax. So boom, instant raise. I don't have to pay taxes, assuming I can meet that physical presence. So my advice is don't have the IRS withhold based off your hope that you'll meet the physical presence. But, uh, you know, any good financial advisor would say, get that money, take the interest. I'm not that disciplined. I'm going to let the IRS have that money and I'll hope for the big refund at the end of the year if I meet the physical presence test. That's probably not the best way, but that's how I'm going to do it. That way you, you don't have to worry that if you screw up the physical presence, like let's say your mom gets sick and you have to go back to your mom's for two months, three months, whatever, you mess up your physical presence test. That's okay. I mean, you're not going to get the savings, but you're not going to owe anything more than you would have anyways. And you still have the, in, the deduction from the uh, state income that you just did. So that's some stuff. Here's a bunch of links. Um, there's no point in trying to write them down. I'm going to put them in the description. So let's go back to the video. Okay, welcome back here to the video part. So this is good. You can save up a whole bunch of money as um, you know, not paying US taxes, but you, this doesn't work if you end up having to pay taxes in the country you're in. So let's take Colombia. Uh, I love Colombia. I spent some time there. It is awesome. It's gorgeous, perfect weather in the Andes, at least for me, it might be cold for you. Uh, but it's a great country, friendly people, great food, um, cool. But if you live in Colombia for more than 185-ish days, let's just say 180s plus, uh, you are a tax resident of Colombia. And Colombia will kindly take, collect taxes from every dime you earned anywhere in the world, including your U.S. money. And their taxes for what most U.S. folk would be making if you're a software engineer, um, it's going to be pretty steep tax. You know, you, you may not want to pay that tax. So you probably don't want to hang out in Colombia for uh, more than 180 days. The trick is to find a, a country that doesn't that defines foreigner income as income paid by the foreigner, not where you live, and that doesn't charge taxes on that. So what countries are those? Uh, UAE, I hear, is one. I wouldn't want to live in the UAE, so that doesn't really count for me. Mexico, um, squishy. Um, Mexico doesn't really seem to pay attention to that, um, from what I hear. You want to research that pretty closely because you do not want to be entangled in a foreign country's um, version of the IRS. That doesn't sound fun to me. So you definitely want to research. I'm not planning on living in Mexico for more than 180 days, so I haven't researched it. Ecuador. Ecuador has sort of mixed information. I've seen definitive statements that Ecuador does not tax expats foreign earned income. I've seen that multiple times. I've also seen the exact opposite <laughs> from one place. I think it might've been old. I'm gonna double check that with a lawyer as I get down there. My plan is not to spend more than 180 days in any one spot. You know, go spend 180 days and 179 days in Colombia and go spend some time in in Ecuador, go spend some time in Mexico, pop up to the US for a couple of weeks. You know, you, that's why I'm getting residency in multiple countries. You know, right now I've got residency in Mexico, I'm getting residency in Ecuador. I don't need residency necessarily in Colombia because I only want to be there for 180 days. You need to get visas for that uh, for once a year. So I've got three countries all in the same time zone that I can pop around between. That's my plan. I think it's solid. If you don't think so, please leave a comment let me know. I don't want to run afoul of the IRS. I've researched this myself. I've given you the links. I've checked with two with an overseas tax advisor and a local tax advisor. So I think I'm on solid ground. But don't let some random internet dude get you in trouble with the IRS. Do your own research. That's what I want to talk about. I hope you find this useful. And um, let me know what you think. And good luck out there. Thanks.